Page 26 in the swing. 3-4 time. There's no sharps or flats in the key signature, but we got accidentals all over the place. Look out. I'll take this one hand at a time. Let's make sure we got the right notes and the right rhythms. First the right hand. So you're starting out with the thumb on G. I really wish they wouldn't give you all these finger numbers because that encourages you to instead of reading notes you just read finger numbers and that doesn't work very well. So here, so it's a G, C, wrist, wrist, and then that's tied, so you're going to hold that down for six counts, and then a rest. Now watch these accidentals here, the third line down, second measure, C sharp, A sharp, thumb. So watch out on that. We're using the same fingers we would use on the white keys, that's all we're doing. Again, they don't need a natural sign there, it's an A natural anyway, but it doesn't hurt anything, so. And then you got the G and the B together. Here, and then the next page is very similar. Let's take a look at the second line there on, on page 27. You have, now B flat. So just third finger. Like so, and then the last line at the bottom. You have a G and an E. You gotta reach up one. You just move it, leave the thumb where it is, just reaching the hand up. You hear. And then again. And then again, one and five. You're just coming down. The C is tied. You're going to hold it down for five, six counts. And as you're doing that, you're playing these notes in the here. So, see the stems, you, the C the stems going up and the others the stems going down. That's a way in music is we can indicate multiple voices, like multiple people singing or playing or whatever. So one person is playing this is or singing this note and another person is doing these notes. That's why the stems are doing that. It just helps to read the music and, and understand what's going on. Like so. Left hand. The first note there is an E. That's two ledger lines above the staff. Or You see the middle C was one ledger line. And the ledger lines, just like the lines in the staff, it's every other note. So the two ledger lines is here. Three, four ledger lines, five ledger lines, six ledger lines, whatever. You can figure out what the notes are by you know, counting up. But that first note, that's an E. You need to just memorize. You're going to get this a lot. Just memorize that note. Two ledger lines, it's an E. Thumb. And then fifth finger. So you reach down. Because you're not in a five finger position. You're here. And then the D sharp here. Second finger. And so you're kind of going there. And the second line, third measure, that is a note higher than that, that's an F. You gotta come up. Leave the hand where it is, you're just reaching up with the thumb. You need to get where you can do that without looking at the keyboard. We can feel this. Going to here. And then at the bottom, last line on page 26, you're here. And then a D sharp. So and then a 3 1, that is a D natural. It's a natural sign. To be a natural sign, in, it would be a D natural anyway, but they put the sign in, that's okay. And an F together. So it's here. On that one. And then thumb again, and you're back to what you were doing before. Page 27, second line, the last two measures. Quarter notes, you have a rest, and then you go down to the F. C, second finger, reach up, and then reach up with thumb for the F. You're in this position. F to F is very common, to go letter to letter. We call it an octave. I'll talk more about octaves later. So this is common. You need to be able to do that. You're going to get this kind of passage a lot. It might not be these notes, but it'll be octave to octave, octave here. And then the next line, it's an F sharp and D sharp. If you are got really big hands and you got fat fingers and you don't fit in but up here very well, 
We have to adjust the fingering for that. What you can do here is reach up and play third finger on the C and two on the D sharp. Because if your hands are so big you can't get up here, you should they should be big enough to reach that. Here. Otherwise, finger it the way they're saying in the book. And the next part then is G, E. And then the last line, third finger, come down. You got a rest, you can move down. And then one rest to come down. Here, C, and that C's tied. You see the stem going down? We got two voices going again. So tied, you hold that down. And as you hold it down, then you're going to do a two, one. Here, for the upper voice on that one. Work it out one hand at a time, and then try putting the hands together very slowly. Working out, it's where you get these accidental things that can get. Go down to the last line on page 26. You're here. Now you got four notes down at once. Doesn't that sound wonderful? That's what it is. It's not my fault. They did it. It's the then lift up and go on. Etc. Go down to the bottom. Last line on page 27. You're here. Now you have to lift up here. You're going to get some silence. But the left hand, you don't. You connect it. You're holding the C's down as you play these. Together. You work it out so you can get the hands together. Slowly. Go as slow as you got to go. I went kind of fast. But you go slow as you need to. The beat's got to be steady. No hesitations. No wrong notes. Beat is steady. Then once you have that, then you can go add maybe the dynamics. Starts out medium soft, sort of soft. That's the right hand. Keep the left hand soft. And then they have these arrows. And when they put it like this, I call that a swell. Swirl up and back down. You get loud. A T here. I always look in the middle of the swell, the middle of the arrows, to see what note or notes are there, and that's where my target is. I'm aiming for that. So it's a go to here. That's I want to feel, then that come back off. Go to here. Again. Go to here. And then back off. And this is all over. Just feel this swell. Here, here, here. There in the last line, you stay it loud enough. And then come back down. And they don't give any swells or too much in the other page. They and there's a couple reasons. Maybe, yeah, you can add them in if you feel them. Go ahead and keep doing it. Or they may have left them out intentionally so we have some contrast. So we're not doing everything the same all the time. We like a little. So we play these a little bit differently. We interpret them differently. Now you're going to second line, you're going to go. Now you're medium loud. You're going to stay medium loud pretty much to the rest of it until you get down to the last line. You see that dim diminuendo means gradually get softer. And you're going to take the rest of the line to do it. A little bit softer, a little bit softer, and softer. And you get all the way to the end. Now you, you have a swell in the left hand. So can you do two different dynamics like that? And it's here, here. And then come down. And there's a retardando at the end. Slow, slow down. Depends on how fast you were going. Well, the speed they're giving is Andantino. Andantino, well, people don't agree what Andantino means. To me, Andantino is a little slower than medium. It's not fast. It's not slow. It, medium, is to me, is a kind of a nice, gentle walking. Okay, you're walking along. That's moderato to me. It's different for different people. And it's been different over the ages that's changed. To me, Andantino. Tino is just a little bit softer, slower than. About where I've been playing. Remember to There's a poke.
Coco Red, slow down a little bit. And then, throw out the thing. It's a personal thing on that. When we do the play with me, we go slow. I'm not trying to perform it. You can perform it on your own later on. I just want to make sure you have all the right notes and correct rhythms and all that. And I like to do that now. I like to do a play with me. I'll give us three counts. Now let's try this together slowly. One, ready, go. Two, three, one, two.